What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to run code and manage files on your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W with a CLI tool. That is, you will no longer need a IDE such as Thani, uh, VS Code, or PyCharm. And by the end of this video, you will be able to run code and manage code on your device, such as remove code, add code, and do other sorts of processes using this simple CLI tool. It is a Python-based CLI tool for today. This CLI tool is called Adafruit Ampy which is a uh, Python based, as I mentioned. And so the prerequisite you will need for this video is you will have to have Python on your device or your local computer. And another prerequisite you will need is you have to have MicroPython already flashed onto your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. So if you have been working with the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W before, you probably already have that prerequisite. And you probably already have Python because that's a pretty standard um, coding language to use in your daily life. So enough being said, uh, I'm just gonna jump straight into it here. I'm on the terminal in my Mac to start running CLI commands, but if you're using Windows, it's fine to use CMD. The process is the same. As long as you have the prereqs, it is fine. So the first thing we want to do is we simply want to pip install the Adafruit Ampi package. So I'm just going to pip install it. I'm using pip3. Some people just have pip, and it's just called Adafruit Ampi, just like this. Very small package, very quick, and I already have it installed before this video. It's already it's already satisfied, but if you if you don't, it should take a matter of seconds to install that. Now, once we have it installed, that's really as simple as it is. So now we can start running commands with this tool. And the first command we want to run is we want to check the files on our device. So in order to do that, we want to go to, or I already have the command written before, so I'm just scrolling up to it. So we want to type in ampi dash dash ports, the ports, and then we want to type in ls so let's just type in ls there to see what we have so we have all these files on our device so that means the command is working fine that was the correct port and by the way if you do not know the port one thing you can simply do is i i just get it by going to thani so i'll just go to thani real quick and show you where the port is so thani and it's on the bottom right there and that's the port. Sometimes it switches, so if you're running this and it doesn't work one time for some reason, it may slightly switch the port, which I have seen in my case. So I'm just gonna exit out of Thani. And by the way, if you are in Thani, this command line tool will not work because Thani occupies the serial port needed to communicate with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. So just quit Thani, and you should see that problem go away. So we ran the first command where we're able to see files on our device, which I was working with before in Thani, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that. The next thing I want to do is I just want to flash a file from my local computer to this device, and I want to run that on my Raspberry Pi Pico W. So the file we have today is a very simple file. It's called test underscore cli.py, and we're just gonna print hello world every second. So it's really simple. So in order to flash that over to our Raspberry Pi Pico W, we can just run the same or similar command. And instead of ls, we're just gonna do puts. I'm just gonna do test cli, and we're just going to run that. So that's gonna put it onto our device. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that. And now we're just gonna run that. So if we do run, it's gonna look for a file on our device to run. So test, CLI. And by the way, if you want to know how you get those things to pop up on the bottom, I'm using auto completion. So I'm just typing tab whenever I don't know the exact name of the file. So auto complete and give me the suggestions. So that's a pretty useful reason why we like to use CLI tools. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run that. And if I'm connected properly again, it should start printing hello world. So that's a great way we can run um, code on the Raspberry Pi Pico without the need for an IDE. And let me just go ahead and exit that. So I'm just going to do Control-C on a Mac and clear. Another thing we can do is we can remove that file from the device. So instead of running it, we can just do RM. And if you guys are familiar with terminal commands, like those are very similar or essentially like the same thing as terminal commands. So we just removed it. And if we go and try to LS into the device, we'll see that that file is gone, so that's pretty cool. A really convenient way to remove files very easily. And the last thing we want to do is we want to get a file from the device to our local computer. So let's see what, what file we want to get. Let's say we want to move imu.py to our local computer. So we can do that. Let me clear again. Sorry, a lot of clearing today. I just want to get things to the top of the screen so everyone can see. So instead of ls, we can do get, and we could do imu.py. And let's just move it to our local computer as something.py. So how this works is the first is the file name on the device, and the second is where you, how you want it named on your computer. So let's go ahead and run that. 
So now let's clear this and we could probably see that there is a file called something on our local computer, which there is. So those are just some really simple ways you can use the CLI tool to manage files on your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. And I just thought it was pretty cool. I didn't know this existed until recently. And this brought up, this was brought up because some user on my channel asked me a great question as to how you can run things periodically on your device. And I didn't really know at the time a good way to do that of how to trigger scripts manually in a, in a periodic manner on the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. And this is actually a great way to do that because what you can essentially do is you can create automation uh, by connecting this to your computer and having your com computer run some sort of cron job to run scripts at specific times on your Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W by triggering this Ampi CLI tool and pointing to that script on the device. So that could be a, a useful reason why we want to do this. Another reason we want to do this is because some people simply prefer CLI, believe it or not. Some people do not like IDEs. I've had some annoying experiences with Thani. Sometimes it does some weird things where it doesn't even cover the whole screen or sometimes I can't click buttons in Thani. So this can be nice if you just want to quickly check something on your device or do other simple things uh, in terms of file management on the device. It can be slightly inconvenient because in order to actually edit a file using the CLI tool, what you want to do is you want to pull it to your local computer, edit it, and then push it back. Thani does have some benefits in that matter. But overall, I think this can add to your reper repertoire of uh, tactics when you're dealing with automation and other um, um, workflows in the Raspberry Pi Pico or this IoT space. So I think learning this can be useful potentially in the future for anyone watching this channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Stay tuned, guys, and thanks for watching. Thank you.